Now, all week we've been celebrating Pride here on Loose Women and today's guests have a very special love story to share as they celebrate an incredible 27 years together and their seventh wedding anniversary next month. Even though the pop goddess Cher nearly stopped it all before it started, and here to tell us more, it's John Barrowman and his husband, Scott Gill. It's so good to see you two, you beautiful pair. Um, Lovely to see you too. You've got a fabulous backdrop there, it has to be said. Palm spring, pool, you know, oh, life's not that. too bad in lockdown, eh, John? Uh, mm -hmm. Not at all. I mean, the thing was, I was, it, I was meant to be back uh, in the UK and so was Scott at this point, but we came back to check on my parents for a month and obviously lockdown happened. And, I, you know, we're very fortunate we have this and we got strand stuck here. So uh, we've been in the sunshine for the last three and a yeah. half months. By the pool yeah, with the by dogs. the pool with the dogs. So we're very lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, now, look, we are talking about your incredible love story. And that kind of is what it is, 27 years together. And we, we mentioned Cher there. So I'll let you yeah. explain the relationship and how she was there in those very early days. Well, first off, I was doing a, I'll let Scott pick it up. I was doing a uh, Sunset Boulevard in uh, London and uh, I had met Scott Pryor at a place in a Chichester year before, yeah. a year before. Mm -hmm. This was our first big date. Cher was hunting me down, called up my manager and said, I need to speak to John Barrowman. I saw him last night on TV and, uh, sorry, on uh, and Sunset. And uh, I was on the phone with her. She said to me, I'd like to take you out to dinner because if I do the show, I want to do the show with you. And I said, fine, but um, I'm going out on my first date with this young man. <laughs> and uh, she said, I said, I can't go. And she said, you're actually going to turn down a date with me. A gay man's going to turn down a dinner with Cher in order to go with somebody else. She said, he must be pretty important to you. And then uh, she said, finally, just bring him along and then tell him what happened at, at later the, in the evening. Well, so it was us on our first date at the, where was it? At the it doesn't, Square. It, doesn't and it was in Barclay Square. <laughs> yeah, and it was. Uh, and uh, no, she, there was Cher playing third wheel to our dates. It was kind of cool. <laughs> After the date, John came out and Cher said, turn, turn and kiss me before yeah, turn, I get in the car. Before I get in the car, and I did. And all the press paparazzi popped out of the bushes and started taking pictures of him. So the and, then, and then he went home with me. The next day it was, uh, John's, toy, John's the new toy boy to Cher, but little did the paparazzi know that I went home with him that mm. night. Yes. <laughs> Good for yes. you. And in fact, Scott, you had met John's parents before you even met John that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, because I went down to a show in Chichester. A friend of mine, Howard Malin, took me down, said there's these three really cute boys who spend the first 20 minutes of the show completely naked on stage. So I said, I'm in. So I skived off work for the day, and we drove down. And uh, during the show, I actually met his parents in the, uh, in the interval before I met John, because yeah, Howard tell, knew the director and knew them. Tell so. them afterwards what, what the first sight of me was, <laughs> apart, apart from seeing me naked on stage, what you saw when you came to the dressing room. Oh, uh, an immediate mooning. Yeah, I, I was pulling my trousers up, getting ready, and I turned around. And when I saw him, uh, I knew, and we talked about this later, I knew yeah. that he was the one that I was going to spend away. the rest of yeah. my life with. And I, But I didn't know how I was going to get from that point of him being in the doorway to where we are. You know, do you know what I mean? To, yeah. to, to getting to date. Because I was going to go, I was having dinner with Sarah Brightman that evening to discuss uh, a recording we were going to do for Sunset. And Scott was going to dinner with Howard, and Howard was a mutual friend. So mm. it was a year later that that date with Cher happened, and that was the first time oh. that uh, we got back together, wasn't it? Yeah. I used to, I saw them. <laughs> kept seeing each other in time. Yeah, bumping into each other. Yeah. Yeah. But that was yeah. 26 years ago this week. Yeah. Yes. It's just, it is a great story. <laughs> and I, I have to ask you, it was in 2013, wasn't it, that the state's ban on same sex marriages was overturned in California, a monumental day for you and many, many other couples. And, and when you heard it had been overturned, you basically got dressed and went straight to the courthouse to get married. Yeah, we had, we'd done the civil partnership in the UK at the St. David's Hotel in Wales. And when we decided that whenever it happened in the US, because we had a situation once when we were coming back into the US and uh, we being a, a family in the UK, we were in the line coming through a customs and I, they said, who is this? And I said, this is uh, my partner because we didn't say husband at that yeah. time. And he said, we don't recognize that here in this country, get out of the, line. Out of the line and get over there. <laughs> So I thought, I said to Scott, when this passes and when it does, the moment it does, we're going to go however we are, go to the registrar's office and get married. Mm -hmm. And we did. We woke up in the morning. My sister called mm -hmm. 
We got out of bed, put shorts on and a t-shirt, drove down to the register's office, and there's a video of us driving there singing. I'm all out of love, I think it is, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, we we got to the register's office, but it wasn't just us. There was a lot of other couples all in like their yeah, late 70s 60s, and 70s, yeah. and 80s. Yeah. And they, a couple of them came up to me and said, look, Mr. Barrowman, we know who you are after we got married. Mm. And uh, they said, would you witness stuff for this, our ceremonies for us? Because most of the families that we have either have disowned us and thrown yeah. us out of our generation, or they're no longer alive and we never thought that we'd ever see this day. So we stood mm. for probably yeah. about 10 to 20 weddings, yeah. didn't we? we? Witnessed wow. And we witnessed all wow. of them that afternoon. And we recorded them for them. And it was a really emotional day because right. really, really. those were the men and women that set the groundwork for Scott and I to be able to stand there. And that's what we yeah. found really, really important. They were the beginning of the whole Stonewall uh, you know, gay pride movement. Mm -hmm. John, what's the, the kind of atmosphere like in the States at the moment? In the sense that we've got a, a, a nutcase running the country. Is that what you're asking, Kay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're, we're wiping down. It's 42 degrees here. The, the atmosphere for pride is that um, pr pride, pride Month has become more than just pride for gay pride. It's about all uh, minorities now who are uh, being marginalized, and that's, you know, meaning uh, the gay, lesbian, transgender community, the Black Lives Matter, everybody is banding together because yeah. we are it's proud. It's just a bunch of people fighting in their own separate Yeah, yeah everybody's fighting one cause, and the one yeah. cause now is not to let anybody be marginalized. Yeah. Um, because what we found being gay men ourselves over the generations is that uh, powerful people who want to change things to suffice their own agendas, they usually attack the the, the 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 weakest part of the group mm -hmm. and for the gay uh, community that's the transgender and i don't mean that in a bad sense i mean that they need to we need to help more to give them more power to give uh transgender men and women more voices to speak with um mm -hmm. because that's who they're they're attacking right away and yeah. also in in the states with black lives matter it's uh it's uh black and brown men and women who are suffering and it's and we all need to band together as these groups to fight the major cause that is uh, causing all of us harm. Yeah, I mean, I, we can tell it's a really febrile atmosphere over there at the moment. And I can tell you're also not a fan of the current US president, John. I mean, of course, other people have different well, views, but you're entitled to yours. Absolutely, and, and there are a lot of people out there who do have different views, and I appreciate that. But the one thing that I do say, and particular things like in the States, and I know it, some of it's happening over in the UK too, we have a court system, the Supreme Court, where three of the Supreme Court judges voted judges in the U.S. to take yeah. away human rights from people. And that's where we are at the moment. And we have, uh, and you know, if I can so bluntly say, and it's because it's a, my platform in a sense, be, being an activist and having spoken out for many, many years, I don't understand anybody who would vote John, for a group of people who would take- John, uh, I'm so sorry, John. I have sorry, to sorry. stop you mid-sentence. I'm so sorry, as always, we could have you for an entire week to talk yeah. with. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, John. We love you. It's all we've got time for. <laughs> He's <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's a Friday show, folks. See you next week.